Hello. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about Wolf's Law and the mechanosensitivity of bone tissue. So Wolf's Law essentially tells us that bones grow over a model in response to the demands that we place on it. Um, so when we read in our biomechanics textbooks about uh, mechanical stress, what we mean by that are compression, tension, bending, torsion, and shear stress or shear forces. Um, so when those mechanical stresses or those forces are placed on bones, um, those are the stimuli that cause the bone to grow and remodel in response. So the places and the exact ways in which the, the bones actually do that remodeling and growing are going to be specific to the mechanical stresses that are placed on those bones. Uh, so when a bone deforms, meaning when it changes shape in response to a mechanical stress, it causes an electrical current to occur actually in the bone tissue itself, and that electrical current appears to be what directs bone remodeling. Uh, that's still an active area of research, and we're not totally sure how that all works yet, but it is an area in progress. Hopefully we will learn more about that soon. Uh, the greatest stimuli are the contractions of muscles pulling on bones and gravity. Okay, so those are the two main ways that we apply mechanical stresses to bones. Number one is the effect of gravity. So just the pull of gravity on our bodies to hold us onto the planet. Uh, that is exerting some amount of force on our bones. Uh, so that contributes. And then that combined with the force that our muscles place on our bones, when our muscles contract, they generate force. The muscle uh, transmits that force through the tendon to the bone. And that force is then pulling, it's exerting that force on the bone. Um, so that force of the muscle on the bone um, is another very significant stimulus, which is why weight bearing exercise and uh, especially exercise where we use a lot of muscle activation, those are going to be the types of movements that are going to be best for promoting bone mineral density. Uh, now, there are a few just kind of general rules that we can follow if the goal is to improve bone mineral density. Um, so generally speaking, um, the things that are better for bone mineral density I listed here on the left and things that are worse for bone mineral density are on the right. Uh, so dynamic loading in general is going to be better than static loading. So that means um, activities where we're in motion are going to be better than activities where we are stationary. Uh, so even though we might be load bearing in a stationary activity, like just standing, for example, is a stationary load bearing activity, um, we're not going to get as much out of that as we are dynamic loading like walking. Um, higher forces exerted on the bone are going to lead to a greater uh, bone mineral density than lower forces applied to the bone. Um, then shorter sessions, shorter exercise sessions more often are going to be better for bone density compared to longer sessions less often. So let's say someone has an hour a day to invest in exercise to improve bone mineral density. Uh, you'd be better off doing that in four 15-minute bursts than you would doing it in one 60-minute session. Uh, now, again, that is only with regard to improvements in bone mineral density. Density. Um, so that's not to say anything about how many calories you might burn or how good it will be for your heart and lungs or your muscle strength or any of those other things. So I'm not really <laughs> mentioning that here. Um, but if we're only worried about bone mineral density, shorter sessions um, more often for an equivalent amount of time are going to be better than longer um, and then finally, activities where we vary our motion, like sprinting, where we might alternate sprinting with rests, or we might sprint at different speeds or by different distances, and we're varying what we're doing, that is better for bone mineral density uh, than a repetitive activity like distance running. So in both cases, we're talking about the same motion of running, um, but there's a big difference in distance running, like imagine running a marathon at a relative relatively constant speed for a long distance compared to something like sprinting where you're stopping and starting and stopping again and changing your speed, changing distance and so on. 
Um, so the explanation for that is actually related to mechanosensitivity. So I'm going to explain this concept here, and that will be all I have for you in this video today. So uh, mechanosensitivity is referring to um, how sensitive the tissue is to mechanical stress. So it's the fact that the tissue responds to mechanical stress. So mechanical stress, like we discussed on a slide or two, um, they act as stimuli uh, to cause um, development and growth or remodeling in the bone. Uh, so the sensitivity to that stimulus is referred to as mechanosensitivity. Uh, so prolonged exercise has diminishing returns. That means that the longer the exercise session goes on, the less return we're getting on our investment in terms of bone mineral density. Now, again, I'm not speaking to any other adaptations or benefits of exercise here, simply bone mineral density. Um, so that's why four 15-minute bouts are going to bring you more benefits than one 60-minute session, uh, because the longer we go, the less return we're getting uh, compared to if we just do shorter uh, intervals of exercise. Uh, repetitive activities reduce osteogenic potential because the bone tissue becomes desensitized. So we call that reaching saturation. So essentially when the bone tissue um, it has been stimulated so many times by um, the mechanical stresses that are being applied. When they've been stimulated enough, they're eventually like, okay, that's enough. I'm not going to respond anymore. So we call that saturation. When it's reached saturation, it means that there's no longer any benefit to the increasing or continuing mechanical stresses because the bone cells are no longer uh, responding. So bone cells adapt to repeated exposure to the stimulus and then stop responding. Um, that means that rest periods are important to allow bone cells to become sensitive again. Uh, so again, if we are trying to increase bone mineral density specifically, I wouldn't choose an activity like distance running because we would reach saturation probably in the first 30 minutes or so, depending on the person and, and how much running they do and so on. Uh, but depending on the person, we'd probably reach saturation in the first 30 minutes or so, you know, plus or minus maybe 60 minutes if we're looking at a whole big marathon. But look at how much more running there is to do after that that is not continuing to stimulate bone mineral density. Uh, if we're looking at the value of, of each minute in stimulating bone mineral density, we are much better off doing short um, high energy bursts. So things that are more like uh, strength training, power lifting, um, anything where we're moving faster, less repetitively with greater force and more rest in between uh, is going to do more for increasing bone mineral density. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.